this morning and I looked at my labs and I'm just like, <sighs> I quit. I went to the doctor yesterday and got my labs drawn. And I went into the doctor and I stepped on that scale and I was four pounds heavier than I was three months ago. I'm like, oh, I'm six foot four. My weight fluctuates. I could be gaining muscle. I think last time I weighed in, I was wearing shorts. I'm not that worried about it because I have slimmed down quite a bit. Hopefully you can see it on here. From when I first started this diet, I am way healthier. I'm not supposed to slap my belly, but I do it anyway. It's hard to see, but yeah. I'm still feeling all right. I, I haven't really lost weight, obviously, since I gained four pounds. <laughs> I'm not counting calories. I'm not doing anything. I'm just eating carnivore without cheating. So I have not been cheating at all. You know, that wasn't great. And then I go in to get my blood pressure checked, and I'm, I actually didn't sleep that well going into it. I'm trying to take my health seriously. So, and it's kind of stressing me out a little bit. So I didn't sleep that well. I was tossing and turning because I knew I was going to have to go into the doctor and get blood pressure. And then like, I was stressed out trying to think about relaxing. So I go in there and they take my blood pressure, which I've been monitoring. I've been monitoring my blood pressure and it's always 132, 136 range over like 82, 86. And every once in a while I get like a low reading and sometimes there's a random high reading, but if I look through all of them, that's about where it sits, which is in a high normal range. And then I go to the doctor, they, it was like 145 over 95. I'm like, it's definitely white coat syndrome. And the lady's like, okay, let's just wait a minute and we'll check your other arm. She did the other arm, it was like 160. I'm like, yeah. Well, because I was stressed because it was higher in that arm and it's like, I wanna take my blood pressure seriously. And then the, they're like, well, have you been taking your medication? I'm like, no. I. No, I didn't take my medication again. Like I told you guys that I didn't want to take medication. I asked my doctor, I literally asked him, I said, is there a way to fix this problem that has not medication? And he said, essentially, no. I mean, I recorded the whole thing. I don't need to play it, but it was like, he said, essentially, yeah, there's no, there's no real way for me to fix my blood pressure other than medication. I don't know if that's true. I don't think that's true, but I don't know if that's true. And it's in a high normal range. And if I stay on this diet, will that get better over time with my body just changing? The blood pressure worries me a little bit because I want to get that in check. That's part of the reason I'm giving up coffee. I don't think that has anything to do with it, but it's one thing I have not cut out of my diet. And then I did my lab works and I got my lab work this morning and I looked at my labs and I'm just like, I quit. <laughs> I quit this diet. I can't do this anymore. I can't. I can't do this anymore. Because I looked at my labs and I was so upset. I saw my hemoglobin. And on just just to be honest, I've been working hard. I have not been cheating. I've been eating mostly beef. Those last couple of weeks I've been eating more pork chops because I found some on sale and it just has been tasting good to me. So I'm not cheating. I'm not eating carbs and I'm not eating sugars. And I do put cream in my coffee again, just a little bit every other day. So I'm not even doing that anyway. But last time, I'll put this on here. So I could see, um, I started my diet at the beginning of this year. And so on April 4th, 2022, this is a week in the carnivore where I was at 6.5 at that time. So that was a week in the carnivore, I believe. And you could see it was like 6, 6.6, 6 6.2, then 6.5. And I'm like, I need to do something. And then I did four months since then, I did that check in and it was 5.7. I'm like, yes, you know, that was just such a victory. I reversed my type two diabetes and then I get this one, it's 5.9. I'm like, it's only two points more, but it's it feels like it was going in the other direction. And then on top of my weight being four pounds, like it just added on that. Either one of them, I don't think it's a big deal, but I'm not cheating, I'm not eating carbs. I'm not eating carbs. So my body is getting glucose. Maybe it's gluconeogenesis. I don't completely understand that. I've watched multiple things on it. But you know, you see these labs and they were going up, went down a little bit, going up. 5.9 is like, I got the message from the doctor's assistant essentially saying, well, that's increased risk of diabetes. I'm like, yes, I know, I know. I have increased risk of diabetes. So they did a basic uh, metabolic panel and I and I'll, everything was in range. Every single thing was in range. And I did see down here at the bottom where it said glucose. The last time it was 130, 
than 104. And I'm not sure if that's, is that the one now? Is it actually lower now, but my A1C was higher? I have no idea. Everything else was in range. And like my sodium has stayed the same and I eat so much salt, so much salt. I add salt to everything. I've been eating a lot of salt and that's all stay the same. But the one that really got me is my cholesterol, which I knew on the carnivore diet that I was gonna be expecting my cholesterol to go up. Last two times I said, we need to put you on a statin and I was like, uh, let me go on a diet and so I came back on 4-4 here it says it was 412 and that was one week into my carnivore diet so it went from a 277 the last time to, to a 412 one week on the carnivore diet which is crazy but then then I got checked again it was a 442 and the doctor uh, said that, like for the total cholesterol there he literally said that was the highest he has ever seen I guess I'm an overachiever there and this one came back at a 498 for total cholesterol. Obviously the H means for high. My HDL, you can see 34, 32, 41, 46, 45. So they actually got a little bit higher, these last two ones after being on the carnivore diet for a while. The LDL, bad cholesterol, which I've actually heard a couple of things recently that your body produces 75 to 85. I've heard two numbers, 75 to 85% of all your cholesterol. It was 217, 189, carnivore diet, 329. That was only weekend again. Then 357, now 427. <laughs> So my cholesterol is through the roof. You look at the triglycerides, which I've heard is something you don't want to really mess with. And you can look, it went from a 208 one week in, four months in, 197, and then seven and a half months in, 131. So look at that, the H on the triglyceride, triglycerides went away. I am happy with that. And the VLDL, 62, 56, 42, 39, 26. And I'm actually, actually not sure what the VLDL is. I, I need to look into that or maybe someone could tell me. So I'm looking at these numbers and I'm like, my cholesterol is through the roof. And so obviously they want to put me on a statin. They want to put me on medication. I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? And I'm looking up, you know, information this morning. What if I'm a hyper responder to a low carb, no carb diet? If I'm a hyper responder, what do I do now? So I Googled hyper responder this morning and it popped up something from diet doctor and i found this it's like three takeaways know if you are a hyper responder hyper responders have a greater than 50 percent in increase in the ldl up to an abnormal level but knowing that if this is risky is more challenging there's that is elevated ldl always harmful we need more data to be sure but enough evidence exists to raise concerns okay change is possible there are a number of changes you can make that may lower your LDL while staying on some version of low carb diet. So I was going through this, you know, what is a hyper responder? They got different hypotheses of why LDL goes up, different energy delivery models, increased substrate model, increased cholesterol and saturated fat intake, lower insulin levels, genetic predisposition. Is elevated LDL harmful for low carb hyper responders? Here at the end, it said, how can a hyper responder lower LDL on a low carb diet? says increase your carb intake. Either cycling more carbs or continuously eating more carbs will frequently lower LDL. Evaluating your carb target and why you set it at the limit is a good place to start, as it is maybe time to reevaluate your goals. Note that increasing carbs may not be an appropriate option if you're eating a strict low carb diet to treat mental conditions such as diabetes or epilepsy. What is worse, high cholesterol or diabetes? Obviously it's the diabetes. The diabetes is more of a risk factor, more proven of a risk factor than having a high LDL. And I know there's a lot of stuff on here and I'm hoping that people that watch this that have been following my journey that know a lot more than me can recommend videos. There's all this information out here. I see stuff from this side. I see stuff from this side. Uh, there's different information and there's a lot of it and it's overwhelming and it's one thing to go out and seek information but it's another thing when it's your health that's on the line it is my health that i'm trying to take hold of and get in charge of it is my health 
in life that I'm trying to get better. And I'm, I'm doing the best I can at not eating carbs. And then all of a sudden, I think I'm a hyper responder. My cholesterol goes through the roof to the point my doctor said he's never seen it higher. And he looks at me and he's like, it's obvious that I've lost a bunch of weight and that I've got much stronger. I'm in better shape, but then my cholesterol is so high. This says I can increase my carb intake, increase my fiber intake, or decrease your saturated fat. And I did think at the end of this article here, it said there's it was interested. It said, interesting. It said, when to consider medication. He said, LDL is not a marker to casually dismiss. There may be reasons to be concerned. And in some cases, add medication to reduce your risks. You and your clinician may want to consider the following questions when deciding whether to add an LDL lowering medication. I, I don't feel like my clinician actually wants to talk to me about these things. It's medication or nothing. Do you want to follow the cardiology guidelines because that gives you peace of mind? No. Do you have other significant cardiac risk factors such as high blood pressure? I'm working on it. Diabetes. I've reversed it still. Hyperinsulinemia? Maybe. Or elevated liptoprotein A. I'm not sure what that is. A strong family history of premature heart disease? No, not really. Not only in people that have like really abused alcohol. Do you have an elevated coronary calcium score or other evidence of significant vascular plaque? And so that's one of the things that came up. I thought, why don't doctors give you this scan, the check for vascular plaque? Why do they just automatically say, hey, we're gonna put you on a statin right off the bat and not even check if you have clogged arteries or blockages or anything? Is the medication just such a mild thing and not a big deal? It's just easy, throw medication out there. And that's that. If I don't have clogged arteries, then what's the big deal? <laughs> I, I just don't know that. I, I assume people have answers to those also. This last one also said, do you feel that lowering LDL is important but believe you're experiencing other benefits from a low carb lifestyle so much so that you're not interested in changing your diet? So they're saying this question right there makes should make me think, is it time for me to consider medication? My risk factors for heart disease have gone way up on a low carb diet because I'm a hyper responder. So maybe I should take medications to keep that in check so I could stay low carb. I see why a lot of people give up on dieting and give up on trying because no one knows all the answers and Everyone has an opinion about things and it's so hard to know what to do. A lot of people said maybe I should get another doctor. It would be nice to sit with a doctor and just have a real conversation about it. Uh, maybe I'm just a big baby because I thought I would get on this diet and I would just be miraculously healed and it would be easy. <laughs> no, I knew it was gonna be hard work. I knew it was gonna be hard work. I wasn't expecting to have some setbacks, but I've learned in my life that setbacks can be just a good learning experience. If you don't, if you don't win, you'll learn. And so I'm not sure if this is a win or a loss or if I should look at it this way, but I look at it like it, I'm learning. And in like anything that I learn, I find immediately that once I learn it, then I can share it and once I can share it, it'll add value to people's lives. So I hope, I hope me sharing my health journey and my health process is helping somebody. I really do, I do, I really, I really hope it helps you and, and there's going to be tough days and it's going to be hard. You're going to get, you're going to get results and, and news that you're not going to like. It just went through my mind like, you should just quit. And I'm like, why would I quit? And where did that thought come from? Because that is stupid. It makes no sense. I feel so much better on a low carb diet. And I fixed a lot of the problems. I, I feel lighter, I feel stronger. And I've, I've, I've had some days lately that I felt pretty weak. My kids got me sick a few weeks ago and I've had you know, a sinus thing. It hasn't been crazy, but I felt a little weak. But once I get my body moving and around and you know, warmed up, I felt pretty good and I, I could still run circles around a lot of people. So no, I'm not, I'm not giving up this low carb lifestyle. I'm not giving up this carnivore diet. Now that being said, if I have to carb cycle a little bit, I mean, I'll take the hit. <laughs>
<laughs> I'll take the hit. The other day I was like, an apple sounded good. And I'm like, why does an apple sound good? That doesn't make any sense. I went on a diet where I ate like almost only apples all the time. And it was like, why does that sound good? And my wife looked at me today and said, Aaron, I've heard you talk about like paying attention to what you're craving. Maybe you need an apple. And I'm like, maybe. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to eat an apple because that would be cheating on the carnivore diet. Carnivores eat apples. If I threw an apple on the ground, my dog might eat it. But I'm a human being and I have some restraint involved. And I guarantee if I ate an apple, it would not kill me. It wouldn't bring back my diabetes right off the bat. But I don't wanna make unwise health decisions. I don't wanna start chasing things that are just gonna get me off track. So I am hypersensitive to it. I know I'm not alone in this. I know that there's someone out there, if not hundreds or thousands of people that have struggled through what I'm struggling with right now and have had to make tough decisions when it comes to the health and what to do with their diet. And I know there's some hyper responders out there. Hey, hyper responders, put your wise words and what you've learned in the comment section. I need your help. And if any of us can sit down and do a live stream together, maybe not a live stream, like we just sit down to talk and record it and have a conversation, you can help me through that. And then in turn, maybe just uh, give it to the community we have here and maybe teach people about being a hyper responder. Send me videos so I can learn about it. I'm not sure what to do. I, I, I'm not sure what to do. I just know that I don't wanna have to get on medications if I don't have to. I would just like to thank everyone for checking out these Kill Blue Light videos. Don't forget to subscribe and like these videos. Share them with anyone you think they could just be inspired from my story and my wife's story of whatever we're posting because we've been all over the place but when our diet and the carnivore journey and all those things just i hope it blesses you and it can bless somebody else so yeah thank you kill me out <laughs>